Hey guys, Mike Tierney here with Princess Auto. Welcome to Tech Tips with Mike T. We're talking about utility sump pumps. So a utility sump pump is typically used within the water. So we in, you know, submerse it in the water, we use the water to cool that pump, that motor that's turning, and we draw that water up. The pumps are designed to discharge a certain amount of volume at a certain distance. We call that head distance, so in feet. So that could be 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, depending on what that pump spec is. And that's typically written on the pump itself or on a box. So just make sure that you understand that the pumps do have limitations on uh, you know, how far they can move it. Now it also depends on the um, adapter you put on. So some of these pumps come with um, you know, a couple of adapters, different sizes for different hoses. Um, as you change the adapter sizes, as you go down in size, the rated distance will actually change. So the rating is designed for no adapter, so whether it's a one inch, three quarter inch, two inch, whatever that might be for that pump. But as you start to adapt down, the distance and the flow rating of that pump is drastically reduced. So, you know, you might be thinking that you might get, say, a thousand gallons an hour out of this pump at 50 feet. Uh, maybe that's on a one inch, but on a half inch, you might only be getting 20 gallons an hour. So it's not necessarily the pump that's, you know, uh, faulty. It's just, you know, by we restricting that water flow, we start to reduce the output of these pumps. So where do we use these? So commonly, you know, you might use them in a window well if that's what you have in your area. So you might have a little bit of buildup of water that's coming in. So you stick them in a window well. Uh, maybe you've got a small pool to drain or a small pond. Uh, you don't want to use these for actual pond fountains or, you know, filter systems, but you can use them for draining out the pond, maybe at the end of the season, or, you know, maybe you've got another pond that you want to fill another, you know, uh, volume of water somewhere else. So it's basically for small transfer. It's really important uh, to monitor them. So these types of pumps don't have a float system attached to them, so you want to make sure that you monitor them. Um, these are plugged into a 115, 120 outlet, and once you've plugged it in, it turns on. So you make sure that you're watching where that water's coming down because you don't want to run these things dry. So really simply by plugging it in, getting it going, attaching your hoses, you know, that, that's basically going to be, you know, getting your, your, your pump ready to go. Some of the major accessories or accessories that you'd probably be looking for are obviously the pump itself, but we also have some hoses. So we have hoses, um, we typically can go with clear, um, clear hose, or in this case, uh, braided reinforcement. Uh, basically, make sure that you buy it in lengths that are either, you know, uh, pre-cut, or in this case, coming out of a package, or you can buy it in, you know, by the foot, but keep in mind, don't exceed the distance that the pump's rated for. To attach that hose to your, to your fittings, you're basically going to use a clamp. So you can use one or two or three clamps, depending on how much uh, the fitting sticks into the hose. Typically, the fittings will have a hose barb that you'll reinforce with a clamp, and um, you know, this, is, this makes a mechanical connection. You can never have enough clamps. If you're attaching a fitting to the hose and then to the, to the actual pump, there's going to be threads there. So we want to make sure that we cover the threads and coat the threads in what we call thread sealant tape here at Princess Auto. In the industry, many people call it Teflon tape. So by covering the threads, it allows us to make a positive connection so that we can prevent leaks between the fitting and the actual housing of the water pump. Now, if you want to have your pump automated, so right out of the box, once you plug it in, it's going to turn on. But maybe you want to add a, you know, a, a float system to it. So what we can do is add a accessory float kit. So it comes in anywhere from five to 10 foot lengths and it has a float. You can hear it wiggling in there. There's a little switch in there, just like it would be in a standard, you know, sump pump. And it also has a kind of a, a male and a female prong. So what you're going to want to do is plug your utility pump 
into the prong, and then the prong into the wall. And then you can tie off whatever length it is that you desire so that this will actually turn this pump into an automated turn on, turn off system. So if it's in a rain barrel or something and you want to make sure that you know you have enough water in the rain barrel but as it rains the the level of the water you don't want it overflowing the rain barrel you could set this to a certain height and allow it to kick on and off automatically and not have to worry about the pump burning out. So these are just a few of the accessories um, that here at Princess Auto that you can uh, purchase for your utility pumps. So some tips and tricks. So basically, there's not a whole lot, but just make sure that you are looking at your pump um, at the beginning of the season. Make sure that there's no debris down in the impeller base of the pump. So basically, the, the water is going to come in here and the impeller is going to turn. Um, if you've got sticks and stones or whatever it is that may be in there, you want to make sure that you can clear that out. And there's basically just some easy, three easy screws in this case that you can just undo and clear out. Uh, what I would suggest before you store this, because this isn't usually being used in a sump pit and you're just probably going to store it in your garage or your shed, um, what I would do at the end of the season is actually take this off and um, just clean it up and give uh, the shaft, the, um, the motor shaft that attaches to the impeller, um, a couple of squirts with some lubricant. Um, as it sits over the, the, the winter, um, there are some seals in there. Uh, you want to make sure that they stay pliable, but you also want to make sure that the rust doesn't form. And that's, that's a big reason why uh, you know, that pump might not work for you in, the, in the, the, you know, the following season. It can be seized, and uh, that might give you some issues. So just give that a bit of a spin, give it a bit of squirt of lubricant, um, you know, uh, whatever brand choice that you, you choose, um, and make sure that uh, um, it's in good working order. Thanks for tuning in to Tech Tips with Mike T. See you next time.